Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Now that we've discussed the short-term control, let's discuss the long-term control, which can, which involves controlling transcription, translation, and proteolysis. So let's start with transcription. So at the transcriptional level, basically, the idea is to control the rate at which the HMG-CoA reductase mRNA is made, right, transcription. So before we can actually discuss the mechanism by which that happens, we have to get past some terminology first. So we'll start off with SRE. SRE is the sterile regulatory element, which is a DNA sequence. And because it's a DNA sequence, its location is in the nucleus of the cell. Okay. And there's also the SREBP, which is the sterile regulatory element binding protein. So it's a transcription factor that actually binds that DNA sequence. And specifically, it's an activator of transcription. And thus, it will increase the transcription of the genes coding for enzymes involved in cholesterol synthesis, specifically HMG-CoA reductase. Right. So it increase the transcription of the the gene for that reductase. And this binding protein is located in it's in the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. And the last thing here is the SCAP or SCAP and it is the SREBP cleavage and activating protein. So the S is is all of this here. This this S represents this whole thing. And then C A P cleavage and activating protein. So it's a membrane protein also embedded in the ER membrane. And what it does is pretty important. It senses and responds to cholesterol levels. Okay. So it's it's kind of the uh well, I guess we'll just see here. So in scenario 1, imagine that cholesterol levels are low. Okay. So this here, this little four ring structure here represents cholesterol is only one of them cholesterol levels are low so that's sensed by the scap protein and it can cleave and activate uh, srebp because because the cholesterol levels are low we need to make more right and we can make more by having an increase of transcription of the reductase M, uh, of the reductase gene so that we can have more mrna that we can translate into protein. So SCAP re recognizes that there's a, a, a low amount of cholesterol and what it'll do is it'll trigger the migration of the SCAP protein and as well as the SREBP uh, to the Golgi. Okay, And it'll be modified there. And you might be wondering what the C and the N are. The C is just the carboxy terminal domain of the SREBP and the N is the amino uh, terminal end. So we go to the Golgi for modification, then what happens is that the SCAP protein will trigger its first cleavage of the SREBP. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to cleave and activate the SREBP. So there's a first cleavage that cuts off a certain portion of it. And then there's a second cleavage that cleaves off specifically the, the amino terminal portion. Uh, and then that amino terminal portion is released into the cytosol and um, it, it, is, it eventually goes into the nucleus and binds the SRE binds the SRE in the nucleus to increase transcription and then we get more reductase mRNA that we can um, that we can transcribe or excuse me the translate uh, into um, the protein so then we have more of this reductase so we end up making more cholesterol okay that's one scenario and that's a scenario when cholesterol levels are low okay now, what if cholesterol levels are high? If cholesterol levels are high, then the high levels of cholesterol are sensed by the SCAP, and the migration of the Golgi for modification does not even happen, right? Because we do not want to end up transcribing um, the reductase to make more cholesterol if we already have plenty of it. If the cholesterol levels are high, we need to we need to uh, not make any. So do not make more. So we're not going to go through and follow through with the transcription of this gene 
if we've already got plenty of cholesterol around and we don't need more reductase to make more of it. So none of this stuff that follows would occur when the cholesterol levels are high. It's only when cholesterol levels are low that we're going to, that the SCAP will go ahead and activate the SREVP and allow it to uh, bind the SRE to have more transcription occur, make more reductase, and uh, as an extension, of course, more cholesterol. Okay. So that's the transcriptional level. Let's look at the translational level and the proteolytic level, starting with the translational level. So translation, basically, we're just going to take this reductase transcript and translate it to the actual enzyme, right, the protein. This is inhibited by a couple things. It's inhibited by dietary cholesterol. That should make sense. It's just the idea that if we've already got cholesterol, let's not make this enzyme that'll make more of it. Another thing is that there are non-sterol metabolites that follow mevalonate in the cholesterol synthesis pathway that will also inhibit this. We mentioned before that mevalonate was the committed molecule to cholesterol synthesis. So metabolites that follow it in the pathway that are after it, they can come by, basically, they're an indication that we're making cholesterol. So they can come by and inhibit translation so that we don't make more of this reductase that will end up making more mevalonate and more of those metabolites which are heading towards cholesterol. So it makes sense then that those guys would all inhibit the translation of this reductase uh, transcript. And the proteolytic level is last. So we have HMG-CoA reductase here, and it has and it's embedded in the ER membrane. Um, it's got a membrane domain here, and it's got a cytosolic domain that actually does the conversion of HMG-CoA into mevalonate. So that's the cytosolic domain there. So the cytosolic domain carries out the actual catalysis, right, converting HMG-CoA to mevalonate then in the committed step. And then there's a membrane domain. This membrane domain contains a sterile sensing domain. So it, it detects sterile levels. So if the sterile concentration is increasing or increases too much, then the HMG-CoA reductase is ubiquitinated, ubiquitinated, and proteolyzed. It's broken down. Because if there's a bunch of sterile around, we don't need to make more. right? So those are three different levels long term that, uh, uh, three different levels of control long term that determine whether or not this reductase is even available for catalytic activity. So I hope that video was helpful in summarizing the long term control. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.